Welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. Uh, this in this session, we're going to talk about unique aspects of Texas A and M Canvas. If you have a chance, please scan the code or access this presentation through the link on the slide. We really want you to have access to this presentation, so later on you can access all the links that we have available. Or if you want to reference something that we talked about during this session, you can look back to these links. My name is Carlos Perez and I am an instructional consultant in the digital learning team for the Center for Teaching Excellence. And I'm Reem Hussain. I'm the moderator for the session, also an instructional consultant with the Center of Teaching Excellence. All right, so today we have three objectives for our presentation. The first one, we want you all to learn about how to merge multiple sections into a single course that is very specific to Texas A&M, and we have a program to do so. Our second objective is to learn more about integrating your syllabus within Canvas. And then our last objective for today, we hope that you create a student-centered curriculum. We also want you all to join our Canvas Essentials community. This is a community that will be open for a year. We have curated different resources for you to reference throughout the semester. So we ask you to fill up this form. And after you fill out this form, we will enroll you into the community. And we hope to have this ready by next week. Once this community is ready, you will have access to it. You will be enrolled if you complete this form. Another resource that we would like to share with you all is the start of semester checklist. We have included the link to this semester checklist in the presentation. So you can click on it to give you an idea of what this looks like. So if you click on that website, it will take you to the start of semester checklist. Okay, click the one. Sorry, let's see. Let me click on this one. And your start of semester checklist looks like this. If you are new faculty, you click right here and it will take you to the different steps that you need to take care of before the start of the semester. All right, so the very first thing that we're gonna talk about in this section is talking about how do you merge multiple sections into a single course. At a and we have a specific program that will allow us to merge courses. It is known as ORCA, and that stands for Online Request Course Administration, not an actual ORCA. All right, so this website, through this website, you are able to merge your sections into one single course. There are different scenarios that we are going to talk about that would qualify for merging a course. We have four different settings. First, we have a multiple sections with the same instructor, stacked courses with the same instructor, stacked courses with different instructors from the same department, and cross-listed courses. We are going to explore each of these scenarios, but before we move, move on, we would like for you to consider some considerations before you start merging your courses. So if you click on that link, it will take you to the ORCA website help. Some of the factors that you might want to consider when merging your courses, you might think about the content that you will be sharing with with the other sections, the type of assessments, the grading, the course roles, publishing and student data. These are things that you should probably consider for merging different sessions. So let's talk about the different scenarios. Let's begin with a basic course merger. For example, if you have one course, the same course at the same level, However, you have five different sections. This would be an easy merger. Okay, you just merge all your classes into one course and that takes care of those sections. Okay, this must be completed by the instructor of record. 
And we do have instructions attached in the presentation for you to learn more about this type of merger. Next, we have a little bit more complicated merger. And this is the one where you need to think about the consideration of merging these courses. It is the same process. However, this type of merger requires you to think about what grades are assigned. For example, you want to combine undergrad courses with the graduate courses. Think about the implication of merging those courses. Another example would be if you have a PhD class and a master's class with different sections, do you, they might be the same course, different sections, but do you really want to merge those two based on grading? Now, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated as you have to follow more steps. Now, if you have stacked courses, different instructors, however, you all are in the same department, here's what needs to be done. First, you wanna contact your academic liaison and let them know that you would like to merge these sections. After you've completed that, we want you to submit a request to the LMS and Digital Learning Support Team through the email support at instructure.com. In this email, we want you to include a written consent from all instructors that they are okay to merge these courses, or you can get your department's head written consent to merge these courses. Another one that is a little bit more complicated is whenever we're looking at cross-listed courses. These are courses that live in two different colleges. You need a written consent from all instructors or department's heads written consent, the list of all courses to be merged, the title for the course that will have all the sections and determine who's going to be the sub account where the course will live. The next part in our section, we are going to talk about the syllabus in Texas a and This is a very specific to our school. To begin with, we have to talk about the two options that we have for our syllabus. We have a, keep in mind that the syllabus tab in the course navigation, it's not the same as the button in the course nav, in the course template. I am going to show you the two differences. So when you first log into Canvas, the very first thing that you will see is the template. This template includes a customized message. You can actually, by clicking edit, you can customize the message that you share with your students when they log into this page. Additionally, we have different buttons on the homepage template. The first one is the syllabus. We have the Canvas resources. This shows students how to do different things through Canvas. Also, we have university resources. Students can access multiple information about different resources across campus. Office hours, this button you can customize to include office hours for your course. This is an old version of the template. However, the new template also has a mental health button where students can access in case that they need access to mental health services. All right, now let's talk about the main differences between the syllabus on the navigation page and the homepage template. We strongly, strongly advise you to use the button, the homepage button syllabus. This one has been made to meet the requirements of Texas A&M. And it is, it is a template that you can customize with your syllabus. The other option where you can access the syllabus is the syllabus in the in the content navigation. That link right there, using this one will cause confusions for students. So we do not want you to use this syllabus because it creates confusion for students. So if you want to share your syllabus with students, we want you to use the syllabus template button. So the way you would edit this syllabus, you would click on the syllabus homepage 
button, click on the edit button, and all you have to do is copy and paste information from your syllabus to this syllabus template. Keep in mind, this template has been approved by Texas A&M Senate, Faculty Senate, and all you have to do is copy and paste information from your syllabus. Once you are done, you can click Save. Another thing you can do by editing this homepage template, you can actually create a copy that you can use for your Howdy website. Remember, this does not satisfy the legal requirement of sharing template. You still have to upload a template, a syllabus copy into your Howdy account. So an easy way to do that, if you right click and you click on the print tab and you save to PDF, you can actually save a copy of your completed syllabus. You save a copy to your computer. Once it's saved, you can actually upload that syllabus into the Howdy portal. That will satisfy the requirements of sharing your syllabus with students. All right. All right, so again, we want you to use the syllabus button, that one, and again, those two are very different. The syllabus and the navigation, navigation menu, it is different than the syllabus button. They are not the same thing. Next thing, we are going to talk about probably the single most important aspect of setting up your Canvas, and that is the gradebook. We want you to have an accurate gradebook. You want to set up at the beginning of the course so students know exactly how they're doing in your class from the start. It is much easier to fix your gradebook before anything has been added than trying to fix the gradebook halfway through the semester. Also, we want students to have an accurate view of their grades. We don't want students to see that they have a 90, but in reality, the real grade might be an 85 or an 80 due to the grading, the gradebook not being set up accurately. So we really want you to set up your gradebook accurately. Additionally, this gradebook should match what you have in the syllabus. We are going to go through seven different steps to set up your gradebook. We are going to show you how to do it. We'll demo, and hopefully you have a chance to try it on your own at the end of this section. So let's begin. The first step that you want to do, you want to determine what grading method you will be using for your class. Are you going to use a point system? Or are you using percentages? Are you going to use grading categories, a weighted grading system? The second step, you want to decide on what type of grading scheme you are going to use. And by grading scheme, we mean are you, what's going to be an A? What's a B? What's a C in your class? And I'm going to show you how you can actually establish that in your course. So you go back to your home page. In the course navigation tab, find the option that says settings. In the settings option, you will scroll down until you see the words grading scheme. By clicking on manage all grading scheme, you can actually see all the grading schemes that are available for you to use. If none of those apply to your course, then you can click on the add grading scheme and you can create your own grading scheme for your course. You can, you, could, you can decide what's going to be an A in your class. What does it take to have a B in your class? What does it take to have a C in your class? Once you are done setting that up, you set up a name, and then you can add this new grading scheme. You will get the option to save that grading scheme. After you have created your grading scheme, then you are ready to start setting up your grading categories, okay? We are going to set up your grading categories. So these are going to be your percentages. These are the grading categories that you have established in your syllabus. So let's take a look at them. 
So make sure that once you set up your grading scheme, make sure you click update course details. So all say all changes can be saved. Now we'll move on to creating those grading groups. Click on the back to the course navigation menu, click on the assignment. To create a new group, you are going to click on the add group. Here you can name the actual grading group that matches your syllabus. For example, if you are going to have exams grading group and those exams will be 50%, you set that up in here, click save, and that will create a grading category for exams being equivalent to 50%. And that's how you, you add a, a grading group. That takes care of step three. Next, we're gonna move on to step four. You are going to create different grading groups. Once you are done creating those grading groups, make sure that all your grading groups add up to the 100%. So let me show you how you can check those percentages. Once you're done setting up your grade, your grades groups, you click on the three little dots, assignments, group weights, and you can see how each one has been broken down. On this one, it has 155. That is very inaccurate, but your grade book should match to 100, or if you have a bonus, 105. Now, if you want to add specific rules for that group, for example, in the assignment groups, I want to drop the lowest grade. There, you can actually add those rules under edit. So you go to that specific group, you click edit, and you can actually set up rules for that one assignment group, for that one grading group. For example, if you wanna drop the lowest grade for the semester, you just click one. You are going to, so you know from the start that you are going to be dropping the lowest score grade for the semester. Go ahead and set that up at the start. So if you already know that you are going to drop the lowest grade within that grading category, you can set it up. If you are going to drop two low grades, you can click that there too. Now, if you know that one assignment cannot be dropped, you can also specify that at this time. So if you know that my introduction assignment will not be dropped, you can click there and add that. Once you are done with the changes, you can click save. Once you are, you've done all these changes, you can go in the grading group category and check all the information. For example, assignments is 40% of the total grade. There is two rules. Within assignments, I'm gonna drop the lowest score. However, I'm never gonna drop the assignment named introduction assignment. So that's how you assign your group weights and that's how you assign group rules. Now, you do not need to assign groups if you are doing points-based courses. So for example, if your course is out of 1,000 points, you do not need to assign percentages. Okay. So, so far we talked about everything setting up your grades. However, we have not looked at the grade book yet. So at this point in time, we are going to take a look at our grade book. Once we have set up all our groups, we've set up our grading scheme, we are ready to take a look at our grade book. So once we go back to our course, you go to the course navigation, you click on the grades link. These are not real students. We have used people from our office to create these grades. So once this is your grade book, this is how your grade book will look like. We are going to look at the different option settings. So first, we're gonna look at our late policy. So if you have a late policy in your syllabus, here is where you can apply those policies for your whole course. For example, if the deadline is Sunday and students did not submit work on that Sunday after Sunday, you can actually automatically apply a grade for missing submission. If that's a zero, you can set it up to a zero. So if after Sunday, students have not submitted any work, we'll add a zero. Now, another thing you can do, you can automatically apply deductions to late submissions. So if you are receiving work after the deadline, but you are going to subtract for say 5% each day, 
you can actually set it up here. Also, you can set up the lowest possible grade. You can set it up to a 50 or whatever grade you want it to be the lowest after the deductions. Once you are done setting up, make sure you click apply settings. Another setting you can change to your gradebook is how you wanna share grades with students. For example, if you are grading free responses and you don't want students to see their grades immediately, or you want all of your students to see grades at the same time, you can actually click to manually post grades. This option can be useful if you are grading free responses. For example, if you grade two students today, those two grades will not be posted until you decide to post all the grades for the students. Just keep in mind, if you do select this option, this will apply to every single assignment. This option applies for the entire course. However, if you go with the automatically posting grades, every time there is a grade, students will automatically see this grade. If you want to modify how grading posting works, you can actually do that individually by assignments as well. If you click on one assignment, you click in the three dots, you can actually hide grades or set, you can hide grades until you decide to show the grades for all students. Another thing you can do, you can message students who, you can decide which students you wanna message. For example, if you have a lot of grading to do on assignments, you can let students know, I have not graded these assignments. You can let them know when you expect to be done grading. If a student forgot to submit an assignment, you can actually send a personal message to those students who have not turned in their assignments yet. So those are options you can do with your gradebook. So again, step six of setting up your gradebook requires you to set up those late and missing policies and your posting policies. And step seven shows you how you're going to post those grades for students. Finally, we have created this little chart to help you with the seven steps for creating an efficient gradebook. And we review each one of those steps. Finally, one more time, we would like to invite you to join us in this Canvas community. It will be open for one year. We have worked very hard in creating resources that are relevant to you and that are easy to navigate. So I am gonna show you now a quick view of this Canvas Essential page that once you sign up for it, we will register into the community ourselves. You do not need to do anything except filling up that form. As you can see, this is how the community will look like when you click start here. It will take you to all the different modules. So if you're not sure how to edit your syllabus, you can go into the syllabus module and learn more about it. When you click on that one, we have two forms of presenting the content to you. One way you can learn it through the slide decks, which walk you step-by-step step how to do the task. Alternatively, you can watch the video, which shows you the same thing. And we have done the same thing for a lot of the resources that you might need for Canvas. Another resource we have, we have future trainings. Uh, in September, we have two of our workshops that we invite you to attend. On September 13th, we are going to talk about all about quizzes, new quizzes, uh, classic quizzes, how to do them, and what's the best way to use them in your classroom. And on September 20th, we are going to talk about our very first third party tool. We're going to talk about Peerceptive, in which you will be able to learn all about it. And we hope to have more of these workshops related to third-party tools throughout the semester. Finally, we invite you to Digital Learning Expo on Monday. Uh, Monday, we're gonna cover everything that you need to know for Canvas, so you are prepared for the first day of school. On day two, we are gonna have faculty demoing best practices with Canvas and how they have used Canvas in innovative and engaging ways. 
for our September workshops, we do require you to register through the ERS website. So we hope to see you in one of these future trainings.